Can we put something on her? Okay, perfect. Thank you. All righty. <laughs> Now let's recap real quick. Now, usually when you have a patient and you ask them to pull something down like this, usually they never pull it down far enough. She's being very nice, but we're going to go ahead and this helps you bring it down a little more. Did you notice I did that without them? Okay, see what I said. Uh, now, because we have to, I almost could use one up there, but because we have to go up high through here, we will, okay, we won't totally expose it because we could start over here and then come down. What else is under here? Uh, well, I had my foot bro, but I was going to take it's it out. Is it wire? Yeah. Because I was oh. going to take it out if you wanted me to. I, I brought extra clothes. <laughs> 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 Remember, this might get on YouTube, so we don't, we don't want. I'm, like I'm saying, I'm sure half the people who looked at the video were. They weren't looking at me. They were looking at the pretty young girl sitting there with the bikini on. <laughs> yeah, that would be. They're trying to get you your phone number and all. <laughs> okay. Now, at this point, uh, don't forget. Once I get down here, can I get back up? I'm gonna look across. Okay, to have you bring your head up and your legs up just a little bit. Okay, lift your head a tad. And kind of hold you like you try to do a little bit of a crunch. That's good. Okay, perfect. Thank you much. All right. Just kind of relax there. Good deal. Now, inspection once again. Vasculature, uh, she has no markings here, no surgical marks or anything like that. Uh, we're looking for pulsation. I didn't see any bulging at all. She appears to be symmetrical. Does not look like uh, you know, no scaffolding, no uh, protuberance or any, anything like that that I can see. So, uh, you know, skin color, you know, hair distribution is real fine like you expect it to be. And look like with her breathing, just looking at her breathing, she's not having any problems with her respirations. Okay. Now that part that I was telling you about, uh, as far as other areas to inspect, you know, you want to check the sclera. You know, we've already seen our patient throughout, but we check the sclera to see if there's any uh, jaundice at all. We have an open mouth and we look inside to see if there's any paleness really going on in there. We also want to look at the pulsation of a carotid because uh, we're worried about the liver if there's any additional uh, pressures and all here and she's not overly bounding with the carotid at all. Um, as we look through here, as I said earlier, uh, nutrition-wise, <clears throat> concerned about capillary refill. We're also concerned about any um, erythema or anything that may be going on. The little fat pads here, making sure she's well nourished and all. No problem with that. And then just kind of hold your hands out like this. We're looking to see if there's any flapping going on. Another sign that lets you know that you've got a compromised liver. Okay, very good. Thank you, much. Just kind of rest it down to your side. All right, we've done our inspection. The next thing we want to do is <coughs> auscultation. It is true that in our exams we've done this a little earlier, but in this case we want to go ahead and listen for bowel sounds to start off with. We're going to use the diaphragm here by stethoscope. Remembering that we want to stay with the four quadrants, starting. I'll warm this up just a little bit too. Sometimes, if your hands are cold like mine, you can even put the stethoscope kind of on the inside of it.
nice and active in there, all right? I'm going to heat it up my stethoscope with no problem, too. Now, these hands, I'm afraid, are still a little chilly. Now, earlier, we uh, determined where the abdominal aorta was. We went here to the midline, and we went a little bit over to the left. And we um, really have to get down in here, feel the pulsation. And since we're trying to determine if there are any bruises, we want to go ahead and listen. think about the um, renal arteries, we think about the iliac, and we think about the femoral. We want to once again go back into looking at the four quadrants, in this case looking at the nine quadrants, right? Because now we're going to talk about the epigastric, we're going to talk about the umbilicus or umbilicus area, and then about the hypogastric area, okay? So at this point, since we want to identify where the renals are, coming once again at her costal vertebral angle, a little bit off of the mid clavicular line. Here and here we're going to listen. Then we'll come down for the, for the uh, iliac. This is our renals. Come down for the iliac. And then we'll need to go into this area here in the uh, inguinal canal for our femorals, right? Okay. Get really strong pulses in this area. And once we get through the clothing, we'll be all right. And we really would have to get even further down. So that's enough of this issue. Enough display. Okay. Now we're going to go to the as we listen to all of these vessels and whatever, we are now, once again, finished with the stethoscope. Unless uh, you now want to go ahead and try to determine the, um, the uh, abdominal aorta, how wide it is, how far you want to go. And there's a couple techniques. You can come through like this, kind of pushing everything in. Remember we are um, mid-sternal uh, and we're a little bit to the left. And in order to do this, you have to get way down in here. And then what you're trying to do, to do is to determine what is the diameter of the aortic pulsation. And you really have to press down. Okay. Now that we've disturbed everything, we know that we're finished with the stethoscope, right? Okay. Now you have a couple of choices. You can percuss first, or you can <coughs> palpate. Right? So why don't we start out with our palpation? Okay? I prefer to palpate. That way it doesn't any problems at all. There's no pain anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So we can start off with a light palpation. With the light palpation and with any palpation, you want to look at your patient's face every now and then, make sure she's not having any discomfort. 
And it probably seems like I started a lot deeper on this palpation than I think we would have when we did the breast, right? Yeah, I did, because everything's a little bit lower, coming mm -hmm. a little bit deeper. Yeah, ah, it's, it's, it's active today, that's for sure. Notice how my hands are here. I'm not going straight down where my nails are causing her any problem. No, I'm going to get a little deeper. Oops, excuse me. It lasts. Okay. How are we doing? Mm -hmm. Worse? Mm -hmm. no? Okay. This is our area for McBurney's Point. My nails were a little sharper. Not sharper, but shorter. <laughs> I'm going to go all the way down to about four centimeters and then let go real quick and then see if the patient is coming off the table with that discomfort. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm 